Under the File menu, within the Export submenu, you'll find the option to export sprite sheets. The default keyboard shortcut is Control e Here, you'll get a dialog box where you can arrange your sprite sheet as desired. By rows is the configuration we want to maintain continuity in the ongoing project, arranging frames from left to right and then from top to bottom. However, feel free to explore and choose the one that suits your specific needs. From the beginning, my project dictates a maximum of 20 frames per animation, limiting my sprite sheet to a maximum of 20 columns. I'll leave the Open Sprite Sheet option active to keep the file open after exporting. To export, go to the Output tab, activate the Output File checkbox, give your file a name and a proper location before exporting it. In the Sprite tab, you can configure which layers to export. I'll leave it on the layer that's currently visible. You could also choose to export your tags individually, which can be beneficial for your project. But for my case, I'll leave it on the option, All Frames, as I want to export my complete set of animations. Finally, in the Borders tab, you can adjust the size and spacing you want to allocate to your frames. Trim Sprite will cut away all unnecessary space outside the outermost boundary of our animation, reducing the total size of our sprite sheet slightly. Trim Cell, on the other hand, will trim each frame individually to the minimum possible size, reserving maximum space. This option may be of interest to users of specific game engines that require this arrangement. You can adjust the border padding, internal padding, and spacing if any of these parameters are useful for your needs, but in this example, I won't be using them. My preferred choice is Trim Sprite, as it will keep the virtual pivot point located between the character's feet in the same position in each frame. If your project has only one camera orientation, you're done. But in my case, I need to do this for the other camera angles as well. Once you export the file, the output settings used previously will remain intact. So I'll immediately give it a unique output name and export it. I'll activate each layer in my master file and export each necessary sprite sheet. At this point, you could consider your project complete. However, I'll quickly show you the wonders of color palettes to stylize the result and give it a unique finish, a retro look by compressing colors in a distinctive way. If you explore the color mode of our master file, you'll notice it's in RGB mode, just like each of the sprite sheets we've exported. In the palette of my master file, in the top options menu, you'll find the option to create color palettes based on the existing colors in our sprite. First, I'll extract some semi-transparent colors. I'll activate the Create Entries with Alpha Component checkbox. I'll select the Table Color RGB 5 Bits Index Mapping option. Then, I'll set a limit of 32 colors or less. Next, I'll organize the palette by transparency in the first menu on the Color Palette. Afterward, I'll manually delete most of the colors, leaving only a small, relatively dark semi-transparent gradient. These colors will match my anti-aliasing generated from Cinema 4D. Next, I'll expand my palette by dragging the edge of the last color and make room for a few more colors, around 20 colors I'd like my palette to have. I'll select only the space I want to fill with new colors, and in the same command, we'll create a color palette based on the existing colors in my file. Now I'll select Replace Current Range. I'll use the same index mapping mode, but this time I won't activate the Alpha Entries checkbox. Then, I'll select my newly created palette and organize it by luminance.
At this point, I select all the colors in my palette, copy them with Ctrl C and go to each of my sprite sheets. By clicking to activate where I'll paste them, I simply paste them one by one until I have them all. If we go to the first sprite sheet, we can see that our character still seems to have all their colors intact. If we go to the color mode and select indexed color, we'll apply our palette to each color comparatively, and each shade in our sprite will correspond to the closest color tone in the palette, replacing it with the palette's tones. However, there's a more elegant method with more interesting results. I'll undo the changes and instead select more options at the bottom of the menu. By clicking on the gradient shown in the dialog box, you'll reveal the various options A-Sprite offers to translate color gradients with different pattern matrices. You can try them all out to see how your final image will look. So, select the one you prefer and apply the changes. Once the process is complete, move on to your next image and repeat the process. This time, the dialog box will retain your last configuration, so you only need to accept and wait for it to process. Now, if you check the color mode of the images we've just edited, you'll see that it's indexed instead of RGB. Next, you need to do the same with the remaining pending images. Remember to save the changes when editing the sprite sheets. Credit for the zombie model used in this course goes to DJ Mason. I appreciate your participation, patience, and the motivation needed to make it to the end. I hope you find value in everything you've learned throughout this course. Thank you and goodbye.